Greetings everyone, my name is Flair Blitz here, and welcome to the demo of our lovely escape. This is a visual novel dating sim made by Reen Works, and it goes of the following. Your life is a peaceful one. Each day you work alongside your otherwise all-female workforce in the pursuit of creating Otomi games. Will you complete your life with a cute girlfriend or will you be doomed to a life of normalcy? Will you just wander around endlessly in space and time being single, being however you want to call it in itself? And also apparently this game is going to have some horror attributes in it considering that it's tagged horror. But also you can play this game as either a man or a woman. So if you play as a woman then this game could be also considered Yuri as well. But we're not going to be using the L word in order to describe that situation, we're just going to call it Yuri, just because, well, I just find it a bit more approachable for everything. And there's also going to be 15 endings in the game when the full release comes out. Three character routes, um, and also of note as well, that this game, when the full release comes out, will have an 18 plus patch. But for the sole purpose of my let's play, the demo and the full let's play of this game will be of course in the all ages category because I like to keep my channel um, active and alive as it is, okay? So let us start the game and if there's any sort of sensory that's required then obviously that will be done in due course. So let us start the game and see how this lovely adventure goes along play the entire demo of the game itself and also did you just notice just now that the um the sound that makes when you go well, when you click something sounds like a dog barking not saying that it's a bad thing but wait a minute um so that's save file that's load file i presume that's menu no um so uh it's not say that it's a work. These are these are settings, obviously. Um, can't tell what that is. Which gender would you like to play as? I haven't picked one yet, and obviously this shuts down the game. So I'm going to be playing as the male character because obviously as you can hear by my voice that I am the male character of this this epic tale that is no doubt going to be wonderful. So. I'm just going to make a save here, you know, on the choices, menu, please type your name below, um, obviously my name is going to be Flare because I'm a flare, a ray of hope, a star in the sky, oh my, here I am, it's another tedious morning at the office, on another typical day of the week, the white logoed mug near the monitor has been sitting there since yesterday's coffee break, and the last minute's notes scrawled on my notepad are still waiting for me. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Um, I don't know until I actually get to the actual um, scene how loud it is part on uh, Sony Vegas. Okay, I can't even remember how long it's been since I started working as a writer. Maybe five or six months? No one's really keeping count, but the feeling of being a newly minted employee hasn't rubbed off me yet. It's as if I'm still the new kid in school. It's nothing I've experienced before, to say the least. My co-workers have been working sorry, have been welcoming so far. Even towards an unassuming guy like me, who doesn't have much experience in making Otomi games or anything interesting for that matter, things can change if you have enough persistency. It's not like I would have wanted to work in this industry creating games for women of all things. Hey, Atomi games can be for men, you know, don't genderize a particular category. And that also goes for anime as well. Just because a particular genre is targeted towards one gender doesn't mean that it can't also cater for the other genders involved here. But if I had to pick... But I, it's not like I would have wanted to work in this industry creating games for women of all things if I had to pick, but I know I can't complain. As one of a few men in the studio, it's a miracle that I got this job to begin with. Now it's how I make my living. Hey there, Flair. How are you on this? Um, Gorgeous and pleasant morning. Gorgeous and pleasant this time? 
better than a rainy one. Oh yeah, look outside my window. Look, it's grey clouds. And rain, for goodness sakes, UK. Last week's downpour was pretty bad. I just got here, what about you? I'm fine. I came in a few minutes ago, so I'm about to boot up a computer. Right? So, did you finish writing that mayor section yet? Or are you still stuck on how the demon battle is supposed to go down? Not yet. I think I have a good idea about how to build things up before the action scene now, though. Mazar is afraid to be a burden to others, and... Oh, for goodness sakes, his name is... Keep clouding over me. Nuria acknowledges this, but encourages Mazari to stand up for her beliefs. And then something about her trusting Mazari to assuage, assuage her self-doubts. Yeah, what do you think, Alexis? Oh, I think I'm afraid to say that name and actually uh, activate Alexis downstairs because um, that's how you pronounce it, right? Don't you think? Well, no, wait, it's Alex. Oh, anyways, moving on. Oh, I think it sounds like a great idea. I mean, it's a fitting scenario for the two girl powers, so I don't see why not. Best friends should trust each other after all. Or oh, I'd like to think so anyways. As long as you don't go off for rails and make them backstab each other during the battle or anything. Which would be wild, by the way. I'd say you should be fine. I would say include the backstabbing part for um, drama. Anyways, well if you say so. Alexis noisily pops open a bag of chips. Crisps. Before pop, sorry, plopping a snack into her mouth. Mmm, it's just dialogue, right? Like, it's nothing major, I'm sure Lisa will approve. Even if she doesn't, it's whatever, yeah? She knows you're still getting used to things. She'll help you fix it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Tee <laughs> When haven't I been? I know how to make good games, too. You can always ask me for advice. I briefly turned to my notepad to look over what we've established from the title's world building. The project I'm working on now is still early in development, but we have another title that's close to release. Is this like a teaser for one of your other games, Ryan Works? Although we haven't decided on this newer game's title yet and some of its key assets are still a work in progress, I have a good feeling about it. It's a fantasy Atomi game that wrestles the issues of oppression and closed-mindedness, both tied together through the theme of love. Intending to resume our conversation, I look over my shoulder to find Alexis sweetly smiling at me. Her familiar, gentle smile begs for my attention. Yes. But you know, since you don't have your hands full at the moment, if it's not too much to ask, would you like to help me darken the outlines of some of my sketches? Pretty please? Ah, oh, so that is now going in depths of the artist's world. It won't take long, I promise. Just a week or so. Nothing too much out of your life. And hey, you'll get out of your room out of your life. Anyways, <laughs> lonely time. Just trace and go. And it'll be as easy as one, two, three. And it's definitely not as hard as coloring between the lines. Even though Alexis comes around to ask me for help a lot, it feels difficult to say no to a smile like hers. But there's no harm in helping her this time around, not to mention, but I don't want to come off as rude. Besides, as a relatively recent hire to the studio, I should continue to help in any way that I can. Who knows? This may even turn out to be a good way to rebuild reports with my co-workers. Sure, I don't mind. Just let me know what I have to do. The woman suddenly bursts into a cheery mood, gleefully raising both of her arms in excitement. A few of her chips spill out of the bag and onto the floor, but the mess leaves her unfazed. Hey, clear up her mess right now, Alexis! She's far too upbeat, far too in a moment to notice that anything has gone amiss. Strangely enough, I don't care either. Alexis has a way of pulling people in. The way she laughs is contagiously satisfying. It's gently enough to brighten the room and compelling enough to ease my fatigue. <laughs> Yay! You're the best, Flair. I know I can always count on you. Now, if you'll just follow me, we can slip by out of the chips. Excuse me? What was that I just heard? Slip by.
Don't think I didn't overhear a little scheme to make others do your work again, Alexis. Oh boy, this can't be good. It never ends well when Liz is angry like this. No compromises, no excuses. That's just how she is. She's more of a serious girl then. The morning hasn't even started yet and I'm already finding myself too worried to take a break. All because I have an employee who is too unproductive to do anything on her own. Do you think making game development is some kind of joke, Alexis? Think that you can manip manipulate others into doing your job just because you feel lazy every day? Do you realise what you're doing? You're bleh, 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 over all of the time and effort I've put into the studio. Oh no. Oh no, you, you have it wrong. I was only... Alexis, don't even start with me. This isn't the first time you've done this, and I suspect that it won't be the last either. Alexis shrinks back. Her happy-go-lucky demeanor suddenly eclipsed by biting contempt. Lisa Vogel, v Vogel, manager, marketer, multitasker, and above all else, a Tommy mastermind. She's the head of game development, while we, her co-workers, serve as her hands, at least. That's what she constantly tells us. There's a death sentence for anyone who opposes her authority. Rarely will she ever budge to settle a difference, because that would go against her principles. Moreover, I don't know if it's possible to convince her she's ever been in the wrong. For someone as serious and sharp as she is, I've always been afraid to dispute her word. With her arms crossed and dark hair tied up, Lisa shoots an intimidating glare at Alexis. I'd like to think that I've been quite reasonable with you, Alexis. Even when you started off on the wrong foot as a new hire, I was lenient with you. I gave you tips and I left you with warnings. I even went out of my way to defend your fragrant misbehaviour in board meetings. As manager of the studio, I've done all I can so that you can succeed and be at your best. And this is your way of repaying me? After so, so many discussions, you still haven't learned from your mistakes. How much longer do I have to wait until you get your act together, Alexis? I I'm sorry. I I'll try harder from now on. Harder isn't good enough, apparently. All you've given me so far are empty promises. Lisa pauses, covering both her eyes before muttering something under her breath. Sheesh. It's not very difficult to put in the effort. I mean, why can't you be as ambitious and hardworking as Maya for once? Is that seriously so much to ask? I turn to find Nexus looking defeated and very much at a loss for words. The bitter sting of disappointment is visibly eaten away at her. I, I, okay, fine, I, I'm sorry. With nothing more to say, Alexis scurries back to her desk with her head downcast. Hmm. Lisa finally turns to me in her constant disapproval. It physically pains me to stare into her quiet, penetrating eyes. Don't think you're off the hook. Okay, what have I done? Don't you think? Don't think you're off the hook either, Flair. Alexis isn't. So Alexis's work isn't your responsibility. Too. Your passive passivity only encourages her to keep us up. She'll keep lazing around and asking others to do her bidding forever. Focus on your own work. She needs to learn to do everything on her own. You're only accountable for the tasks I personally assign you, okay? Otherwise, what was the point of me hiring her? Does hiring people just to get them to tell others to do their own work for them make sense to you? Well, at least you have a point there, because that sounds like a very dumb way of going about to work. Hey, hey, finance, could you do accounting for me? Hey, hey, accounting, could you do finance for me, please? Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. I guess not. Lisa pauses yet again. <sighs> Seriously, get yourself together, Flair. I know you're better than this. So do I. I really needed my cup of coffee now. In her frustration, Lisa does a double take at the floor. Oh, and please clean this mess up. I know it is mostly like you came from Alexa, Alexis, but keeping the office clean is everyone's responsibility. Thanks. I wordlessly nod in agreement. Although I'm sometimes reluctant to admit it, I know Lisa is looking out for me too. Indeed. Lisa 
briskly leaves my desk and heads towards the warm drink dispenser down the aisle. I grab a tissue out of a box and dump the potato chip crumbs into the trash bin. I felt bad for myself, but especially for Alexis, since I'm partly to blame for Lisa getting so angry. I should check it. No, don't! Just do your work, please! I head in the opposite direction of Lisa and sneak over to my co worker's desk. Alyssa has still not recovered from Lisa's harsh words. A gloominess hasn't over has overtaken her. It's as if she has become an entirely different person. Alexis, I'm sorry about what just happened. This is pretty unbearable when she's angry, isn't she? No, I understand. You don't have to apologize. After all, I'm the one who asked you asked for your help. I need to be more responsible, like Lisa said. If anything, I'm sorry if I got you into this mess. Red eye, redhead eyes dart around nervously. Like, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. But let's say that old habits don't die, they hibernate. Old habits? I don't get it. Does she mean she used to have a bad habit of asking for help? That doesn't sound so bad. Everyone needs help sometimes. That's just natural. Either way, this probably isn't the time to press her about it. Especially not when she was just lectured by Lisa. I see. Yeah, old habits can really come back to bite you, huh? No kidding. There's not like an off or on. So, on or off switch that you can flip whenever you want. In that way, habits are like rain clouds. All you can do is either get an umbrella or run away. Run far, far away, preferably indoors. And you have to deal with them whenever they come knocking at your door, I guess. Life isn't kind enough to plan around, sorry, plan around your schedule. Rain clouds are. Sounds dismissal, but it does make sense. The way you put it. Alexa suddenly sits back, pensively glancing towards the ceiling and talking as she's thinking out loud. It's true, it's true. But why else would they come, you know? It's not like I asked for them. I'm sure no one else would either. Kind of like Mizari. She didn't ask for trouble to befell the town folk. It's not like she wants to be whisked away to live with a demon king. Who would want to have her life constantly put in danger? Well, I sure wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Which reminds me, Lisa, that city girl, does she still... You know... If only she could see... Ahem... <laughs> An abrupt, angry grunt, oh, sorry, grunt interrupts our conversation. Alexa and I take it as our cue to stop disrupting the people around us. Uh, guess I was being too loud again, huh? I'm sorry about that. It seems like I hate getting you into trouble today. And anyway, I definitely can't have my you mad at me as well. But by the end of the day, you'll probably hate me too. I don't... Ugh, this is bad. Very bad. It's okay, Alexis, don't worry about it. That won't happen again, I promise. Well, I should probably get back to work. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, later. I don't know what to make of Alexis's predicament. Nonetheless, the reality is that there's no time for me to be concerned about Alexis's lack of sense of responsibility. I turn I return to my desk and begin my duties for the day. I have some catching up to do, so I'll have to work a little quicker today. Mm, before I know it, the afternoon quickly comes around. Time always seems to fly when I become immersed in writing. Alright everyone, you know what time it is. Step away from your computers and start heading downstairs, you know the drill. You don't have to tell me twice, hee <laughs> hee. Alexis. Aw, oh, you aren't still mad about this morning, are you? Well, how's your work coming? It's, uh, going... Alexis, for goodness sake. Good enough, I suppose. Uh, I suppose I've cooled down a bit. Yeah, then let's share a plate of... I don't know how to pronounce that word. That word always comes up in a daily routine, but it's just... Gyoza. I don't know, Flair 2? What? Why me? As an apology for early, of course. You say that like he had no responsibility in what happened. But I guess that doesn't really matter now, huh? As long as you've both learnt your lessons. I sure have. Me too. Alright, I'm trusting you two. Oh, do you proud? Especially if we get a triple serve in the Guazo. Why do I get a thing I'll be the one footing the bill for all of that? 
Uh, I'm s I'll split a bill with you, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, for goodness sakes, Alexis. With three of us eagerly head downstairs for the lunch break, following behind the rest of the office. I take my place at the end of the line. In front of me, Alexis is vacating between Odin and the teriyaki chicken rice bowl. Lisa is waiting in the line adjacent to ours. She most likely picked out her order hours ago. Finally, Mayu standing directly behind Lisa is intently staring at the menu plastered above the register. I haven't brought a lunch to work since I was first hired at the studio because it's actually cheaper to dine here than buy ingredients at the grocery store. It's a plus that the food here is extremely delicious too. The owners of the restaurant are gracious enough to grant our whole company a sizable discount off every meal as a thank you for renting the upper floor of this building, which they own. I sometimes wonder whether this is a better deal for us or them. A triple serving of guise Guizo and a beef of uh, a bowl of beef Odin, <laughs> please. You weren't kidding about that, were you? I never joke about food. I'm insulted that you don't know that, even after all this time. <laughs> Everyone who works here looks forward to lunchtime. It's not only about filling our stomachs, it's a time to unwind and refresh ourselves a bit. It rings the excess stress from the workday. Alexis pats, pats me on the shoulder as she heads off. You up next, Flair? Get your head out of the clouds. Oh, gosh. Yes. You have a reason why we're in rain clouds in the first place, Alexis. Like a clockwork, I waved up to the counter by the smiley employee. Your order, sir? Mm, I shall have myself... Well, then. Um, no, not load file. I like to save file. On there, please. I shall have. I shall have the spicy yuzu ramen, please. I briefly look over my shoulder and notice that everyone seems to be heading back upstairs. I'll have the spicy yuzu ramen to go. Sure. I'll have that ready for you as soon as possible. Flare, right? Right. After pain, I decide to wait for near Mayu, who also seems to be waiting for her order. Her gaze is affixed to the tiled floor. She almost seems to be observing the many black business casual shoes that stand lined up. <sighs> she doesn't seem to notice me standing next to her. On the other hand, she may be deliberately ignoring me. Mayu has always been a difficult person to read. In any case, I decide not to disturb her. After 20 some minutes, Mayu just calls out two orders of Yuzu Ramen. Mayu and I simultaneously approach the counter to grab our orders. When our eyes meet, she looks at me perplexedly. Huh? Uh, why are the brunette fridges <laughs> fidgets around with a plastic bowl, awkwardly trying to get a hold, a firm hold of her meal? For whatever reason, she seems flustered today. After fumbling with a ramen for far too long, she pulls it against her chest and begins rushing towards the stairwell. Well, on the way up, however, she manages to trip on her own TV. Oh, the ball flies out of her hands, clambering against the floor and spilling its contents in each way, in every which way. The ground is covered with citrus-scented goodness, and the skirt is perplexed with unfortunate bright red flakes of soup, flakes of soup. One of her ankles appears to be slightly twisted underneath her, the broth painting a glimmer than reality picture. Everyone in the restaurant is suddenly in a commotion, uncertain what to make of the situation. It seems to be a bad case of a bystander effect. Are you okay, M Mayo? Jeez, that looked like a bad fall. Ah, what should we do? What should we do? Someone should help my. Maybe you should, Alexis! I don't waste any time. I've only seen myself with a task. My lunch can wait a bit longer. It's okay, guys. Go on ahead of us. I'll take care of this. Thank you, Flair. I'm glad to see you're such a stand up person. Let me know as soon as you're back in the office. Come on, Alexis. You need to get straight back to work. Um, okay, if you say so, boss lady. I hope your ankle doesn't hurt too much, my you. The two women managed to safely travel past the soupy puddle as I rushed to the scene and crouched to my level. 
With her knees bent, she leans against the weight of her own arm to hold herself off the floor. Here, I'll help you stand. I offer my hand, but the brunette only gives me an awkward blank stare. One might think I just said something outlandish. No, it's okay. I don't need your help, Flair. Are you sure? Yes, thank you. I'm fine on my own. The woman starts to get up, but swiftly stumbles over herself once more. I immediately hop to her side to prevent her from toppling over. Sorry. There's no need to apologize. Stuff happens. Not to me. You must live a pretty good life then, huh? With Mayu's arm hanging around my neck, we inch our way up to the stairs as carefully as we manage. We can manage. After a while, I managed to get her safely to the office. Uh, thank you again, Flair. The brunette turns away from me, clearly trying to avoid making eye contact. Considering how little she talks to everyone, I'm not overly surprised. Yeah, I don't mention it. Oh, hey, why don't I give you my lunch? I got the spy to use ramen, too. I'm not all that hungry anyway. What do you say? Mayu's amber eyes sparkle with delight. Would you really? It's not a joke. I'm serious, as least I can do. I'm sure you need it more than I do. Oh, but I left it downstairs. Wait right here and I'll get it for you. Okay. Thank you, Flair. For everything. After retrieving my lunch, I hand it to Mayu. She cradles a bowl as if it's a gift that valuable beyond word. Beyond words. I hope it hasn't cooled down too much. That's okay. Yuzu ramen is good. Is it even good cold? Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad you're feeling a bit better. Mayu, how's your ankle feeling? Lisa's commending. Sorry, commanding but word of voice rings out from across the office, and the woman herself soon comes bounding over. Flair, didn't I tell you to let me know as soon as you were back? Oh, sheesh, no, you're right. I'm sorry, I got distracted. <sighs> well, never mind, I suppose. Anyway, I bought you an ice pack, Mayu. We should help to reduce the swelling on your ankle. I have some painkillers too if you need them. It doesn't hurt that badly. Actually, I'll be fine. Despite Mayu's protest, Lisa kneels down to care for the brunette's ankle. Make sure to continue pressing down on it, okay? Go as easy with your work as you need. Just focus on getting better. Uh, okay, Lisa. It looks like Mayu is in good hands, so I decide to take my leave. I swiftly return to my desk but to get to work, but I hear Lisa and Mayu chat for a while longer. At some point, Alexis tries to join in, but is quickly scolded. Indeed. The hours fly by and the rest of the day passes without incident. By the end of it, I'm excited to head home and get a good night's sleep. Nonetheless, the thought of Mayu being in discomfort bothers me. I wonder if there's something I could do to help alleviate it. Aviate it, sorry. I reach over to collect my belongings and pick up for the evening. Afterwards, I make my way towards Mayu's desk. It's rare to see you come this way, Flair. Is there anything you need? I look over to find Mayu staggering a bit, leaning against Lisa for balance. Well, I was thinking I could maybe take Mayu home, you know, make sure she gets there safe and sound. I don't think it's a good idea for her to go home alone, in that condition. I understand that you're concerned, but you don't need to worry. Mayu can handle herself. A little fool won't put anyone on crutches. Hmm, I turn back to Mayu. Although she hasn't said a word, when our eyes meet, a slight smile breaks upon her lips. Are you sure? I mean, it'd still be good for her to have some extra help tonight. Right? Once again, there's no need for you to be overly concerned, Flair. Mayu is a grown adult who can take care of herself. Besides, I know what she... I know she wouldn't be comfortable with that. She wouldn't dare allow a man she's barely acquainted with to come into her home. You know, I honestly haven't even considered that. I guess it wasn't such a good idea. Exactly. I appreciate the thought, as I'm sure Mayu does, but this isn't the time for you to try to play hero. You trust that Mayu can handle things on her own, as with any other grown woman. Flair. You'll never get a girlfriend if you can't come to understand how we ladies operate. Okay. Uh.
Okay, let's just go with the flow. Lisa's is right. Why should I care about this anyway? It's not like I have to impress Mayu or anything. And I see your point, Lisa. I'm glad to hear that. I guess I'll head on home then. I'll see you both tomorrow. Feel better, Mayu. See you in the morning, Flair. Hmm. Mayu doesn't respond verbally, but she does give me an oblit ob obligatory goodbye nod. Head nod, sorry, before I turn around. When I make it home, I decide to blank around for the night. In retrospect, I'm not even sure why I offered to bring Mayu home earlier. I mean, if I had, I wouldn't have had the chance to watch any... Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I thought this. I thought they said this game was all ages. Maybe that's coming down to the um, graphical parts of the game. Where's the freedom in that? On a special day such as this one, I never live that down. It's too easy to get backed up when you're stressed out. After all, just watching this mask. Okay, is already <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'm not going to look at all that and just, you know, just let your imagination take over. As I step into the office, I began running through my usual morning routine. I plot an agenda for the day, review my drafts, check my emails, and lastly consult with my colleagues. Considering how often Alexis comes around, however, the consult with colleagues part usually happens first. Then again, consulting sounds way too formal for someone as lazy and carefree as Alexis. Now that I think of it, it's already 20 minutes to wait. Alexis should have popped around the corner with a sweet sunny smile to greet me and comment on, web on the weather a while ago. I haven't heard a peep from Lisa yet. Either, She's n she normally would have noticed Alexis' absence by now and approached me to complain about how she needs to be punctual and take her job seriously. I get up from my desk and look around, hoping Mayu may know whatever's going on. I'm away to her cubicle. I suddenly notice the loud echoes of someone frantically stomping up the steps. Alexis is late. Guys, guys, I'm sorry. Everything is okay. I'm not dead. I just have to uh, save a ki no, no, two cats. No, really, two cats. What other chances that not only one but two cats will be stuck in the very same tree at the same time? I call BS on that, Alexis. It was difficult and painful. So make an exception for my tiredness just this once, please. I don't believe you, Alexis. I promise I won't be late ever again. Yeah, they say that every time. Uh oh, Flair. But thank goodness you're here. Where's Lisa? She's not going to fire me, is she? Alexa wailed toward me. Her hair frizzled and her hands against her knees. She tries to catch her breath. Whoa, whoa, take it easy there. No one's going to fire you. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Have you seen her yet? Tell me that you haven't s told her I was late. I don't want her to be mad at me again, especially not twice in a row. This is scary, you know. I don't know how you can stand to be around her, Flair. It's okay. Just relax, Alexis. I haven't seen her at all this morning. I was about to go to Mayu's desk to ask what was happening, but I have a feeling she might not be here either. Alexis lets out a sigh of relief. Thank the heavens. My life is saved. You have no idea how old it's getting. Like my alarm didn't go off this morning. I felt I lost track of time when I was in the shower. I didn't have time to do my hair. After that, I went to make breakfast, but the damn toaster wouldn't freaking cooperate with me. And then I had to take the trash out, but the, the strugglers will, you know what I mean. Sure, I think I do, at least. Yes, yeah, so please, Flair, please, please, don't tell these little money that I was late today. I'll make it worth your while too. I promise I'll pay for your lunch today. How about it? Do we have a deal? I shouldn't do that desperate voice, especially considering that that's a smile. I do feel bad for Alexis, and I don't think I can bear the sight of Lisa screaming at her again. There's only so much conflict resolution I can, conflict resolution I can have. Like, resolution? Yeah, I can handle. You have my word, was, this will be a secret between you and me. The woman squirrels in the most hyperactive, cutesy, magical way I've ever heard to date. It almost sounds like she just won the lottery. Yay! 
Yeah, I'll flay you're the best, you really are. Heh, <laughs> sure. Well, okay, let's get down to business then. We'll act like we normally do and work our butts off like nothing ever happened. No one will suspect a thing. Yeah, let's get to work. With our genius plan set, Alexis and I return to our respective desks to start the work day. Still, I can't help but wonder why Mayu and Lisa are so late. An hour and a half passed before Lisa and Mayu finally show up at the office. I get up to meet them. Surprisingly, Alexis mimics my movements almost perfectly. Sorry everybody, I know we're late, but rest assured that it was urgent. I hope there wasn't any trouble while we're gone. No worries, I understand. Things happen. Lisa suddenly raises an eyebrow as she turns to Alexis. Meanwhile, Mayu slowly approaches me. I want to thank you again for your help yesterday, Flair. I know it might not be much, but please, allow me to pay for your lunch today. It's the least I can do. Oh, thank you for your offer, Mayu. But Alexis have actually already, actually already agreed to pay for me. Lisa turns to me. Wearing a face of concern as she puts her hand on her hip. Really? And why, pray tell, is that? Ha 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 ha! This spills the beans. Why did I have all days, Blair? Before I can reply, Alexis must have whatever excuse she can think of, or perhaps I already had prepared. Because after what you told me yesterday, I had a change of heart. I decided I wanted to make a be a more responsible person, and the first step. Okay, I'm going to turn this music down because this is just simply too loud. Okay, that's too quiet. And the first step of that was to make amends with Flair. Lisa, I know you, I now understand I should have asked him for help with my work. I was wrong. I shouldn't have. Redhead puts her hands together and bows to Lisa under the pretense of approaching humble. You really know how to put on the show, don't you, Alexis? I'm not buying this for a second. Not one. No, no, no I swear it's true. It's how I really feel. I'm a changed woman. Yeah, I can vouch for her. She's trying her best to make a difference. She insisted that paying for my lunch was the first step in her reha rehabilitation, as she called it. It's not a complete lie. Alexis is obviously trying to prove she's more reliable than we think. That she is an important member of the studio, I based on her own quirky way. Hmm, well, this is an interesting scenario we've got here. I don't recall you ever coming to Alexis' defense before, Flair. Normally you quite listen to whatever I have to say and then we agree with and then agree with me. Lisa's dark eyes widen as she grows more and more suspicious of our story. So after all the issues we discussed yesterday, what you're not what you're telling me now is that Alexis is a good worker? That for whatever godforsaken reason has she finally committed to changing herself for better all in one measly day? Is this still Alexis that we're talking about? You do know how you do know how absurd this all sounds, right, Flair? I freeze up, I can't dispute the logic of her words. You need to have a brain power of two cats stuck in a tree together to believe otherwise. Uh, see, it's not that hard to me to tell when something's wrong. I don't even have to ask. I can tell by the way on you. I can tell by the looks on your face. In fact, let me guess. I bet the reason Alexis wants to, out of nowhere, mind you pay for your lunch, Blair, is so she can prevent you from snitching to me that she was late for work. Am I correct? Or am I correct? On the verge of tears, Alexis lowers her head and lets out a muffled sniff. It's not like I expected anything more of you. Not that I wouldn't love a surprise. My you, Flair, please go to your desk and begin working. We're wasting time here, and we have a release to prepare for. If I if you need anything, I won't be long. Just hold tight for a bit, okay? With a step forward, Lisa sternly crosses her arms. Alexa, please follow me into my office. Yes, Lisa. Mayu and I awkwardly watch the women disappear into the back room. The brunette, apparently uncertain what to do, plays with her hair. As much as I should get to work, I don't want to walk away and be rude. So, Flair, uh, did you get a good night's sleep? 
Yeah, I guess. What about you? Me too. Um, and how's your work going? I've been making progress. I suppose. Things are easier now that I've been at it for a few months. Oh, um, great. C cool. Uh, are you feeling any better today? But Brunette immediately gazes down at the floor, silently brushing me off. That's a sign of saying that... No. Mayu, are you okay? I received no response. Mayu is back to ignoring me again, it seems. It was nice while it lasted, but I should have known it. It would have been short. I should have known it would have been short-lived. I return to my desk to resume my daily routine, carrying on with the work I need to finish before this afternoon. Before I know it, my favourite time of day, lunch, fine. So lunch finally comes around. I raise from my seat, stretch my legs, and head down to the restaurant, considering my meal options. As I step behind a short line of people waiting to order, I spot Lisa and Mayu together, like the two peas in the pod they are. I search the room to see if Alexis is somewhere too, here, but here too, but I can't find her. Hey, Lisa, do you know if Alexis is going to eat lunch with us? Hmm. She won't be joining us today. As much as I'm against punishing you all, she still needs to make up for lost time. I mean, I'm not doing this because I want to. The problem is that her being late e by even a few hours will throw our whole schedule off since she already gets distracted enough as it is. Besides, at worst, Alexis being late undermines her credibility as someone I can rely on. This is Lisa, all right. Finically, about what characteristics people should or shouldn't have are always trying to justify it in roundabout ways. In order to be considered a model individual in her mind, one needs to meet her standards. Precisely because of that, I can't help but think she's been hypocritical, hypocritical right now. Mayu, as she arrived at the office far later than Nexus did, by her own logic, shouldn't the both of them suffer the consequences as well? Um. I don't mean to speak out of turn, but isn't it unfair to call out someone else for being late when you're equally culpable? Um, I don't... Quite honestly, it seems like you're mistreating her out of personal resentment. The woman glares at me, radiating with a frightening intensity of a hunter preparing to call her prey. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. No. Don't you dare accuse me of anything so petty ever again. Do you honestly believe I would stoop so low, Flair? Mayu and I were late because I had to escort to her to be a hospital this morning. She told me the swelling her ankle got worse overnight and I wanted to make sure it didn't go untreated. Unlike Alexis who was late because of rather dubious reasons, do you see the difference here? Or should I take it from the top? No, I understand. I awkwardly scratch, awkwardly scratch the back of my neck. Um, sorry for the trouble. I mean, I didn't mean, I didn't know, but there was no excuse. It's fine, Flair. I knew you only wanted to make sure your co-worker was treated fairly, and it was an admirable pursuit. Even so, you really should consider every single factor before you come to any conclusions. In my experience, it will save you a lot of trouble. Dolly noted. In other words, I think it's our turn to order. Let's not waste any time, shall we? The cashier calls the two of us up to the register. Thankfully, we're ordering as a group today. So there's no need for the awkward fumbling of cash or credit cards. Go ahead, Flair, you can order first. Um, I'm still gonna order the ramen. I'll have the user ramen. Coming right up. After Mayu and Lisa have put in their orders, the three of us seat ourselves near the front of a restaurant. Lisa and I idly chat, Mayu only giving the occasional nod until our meals arrive. Two chicken yakisobas and one, one spicy yuzu ramen are placed front and center. Considering I've never spent, well, never seen Mayu eat anything except ramen, it's hard for me to contain any contain my surprise. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's dig in. I grab a few noodles and a bite of meat with my chopsticks, trying to sample everything together: the tartar for citrus and the punch from the spice that is soaked into the noodles, which are doubtlessly made in store, perfectly complement the savoury, lightly seasoned pork. 
I glance over at Lisa to find her digging into her plate as well. Maya, however, has barely touched her food. She simply sits there, staring idly at her dish. Hmm. Has the ankle swelling affected her appetite? Mayu, are you feeling okay? You've barely touched your food. Please try to eat as much as you can, Mayu. You can't be starving yourself while your body needs the energy to ensure your ankle heals properly. After pushing a piece of chicken around with her chopsticks, Mayu grimaces and lifts the morsel up to her lips. It's clear that she isn't enjoying the yakisoba. Why don't you switch the meals with me? The brunette face immediately lights up. Are you sure? Yeah, here, take it. I slide over my bowl of ramen while she pushes her plate across the table. Within minutes, Mayu has happily slurped up all the noodles and each of us have finished our meals. With lunch behind us, we return to the office. An hour into the afternoon, I heard a loud commotion from nearby. Already having a good idea of what's happening, I peek my head over my computer monitor and suddenly watch the event unfold. Alexa is sitting at her desk, apparently mildly frustrated. I assume she's still stuck on the spriting stage of another character. Lisa, meanwhile, seems to be personally supervising Alexis's work. Why isn't this going right? Like, what the hell? See? I swear I'm going to chuck this damn stylus at the screen. Cooperate with me, why don't you? Maybe you should take a short break. Yelling complaints certainly aren't going to inspire you. No! Shut it! I can't do this. J just stop watching over my shoulder and go away. You're killing my creativity. No, really, please, I insist. You're being a distraction to everyone around you. She ignores Lisa. However, she attempts to muscle through her frustrations, erasing and brushing over the hands of a demon character, hoping that she can... well, she could get the shading right. This unproductive process continues for some time, as Lisa still looms over her, unhappy about how paranoid Alexa seemed to be. Come on, come on, stop it, you piece of blank computer! Move like I want you to! Alexa, please listen to me. I don't want to have to repeat myself again. Take. A. Break. Okay? Despite Lisa's best efforts, the frustration still visibly building Alexa's face, her plump cheeks reddening. No. No! You know what, Lisa? I've had it with you. Screw this and screw you. Damn it all! Ugh! The redhead grabs a pen from her desk and chucks it against the back wall, an app-cracking sound ringing out. Mayu, annoyed by the noise, raises from her seat and stomps her way towards the restroom. Alexa, pull yourself together and start acting your age. You need to learn to control your anger and not take it out on other people like a child. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but I'm honestly not sure how else I can get through to you at, some, at this point. But in any case, throwing things and screaming won't help anyone. So you need to cut it out before you do something you regret. HA! Now you think this is a problem? Why the hell does everything have to be a problem to you? Like, why do you even care how I act? Am I only a huge failure in your eyes, Lisa? Is that it? Stop with this self depricting nonsense, Alexis. I asked you to take a break, and now you're putting your insecurities on display for the entire world. Quite frankly, this isn't a good look for you. I haven't even addressed your little personal attacks either. The artist suddenly pushes her chair out and stares, wiping the tears from her eyes with her little sleeve. I've had it with you, Lisa. Take a break, my bleh. It's always do this or do that, Alexis. You're not working hard enough, Alexis. Do you think I'm some slave to you? All you've ever done is make my life worse, Lisa. Some friend you are. Hands clenched and her hair undone, the red head grabs her purse and storms out of the office. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm not going after her. She's been damn right reprend Lisa. After giving her some thought, I can't understand why Lisa has to be so difficult towards Alexis when she was clearly trying to deal with things on her own. 
It was like she had to escalate things because of her own pride. The consequence of my actions distant from my mind. I stopped for one to Lisa to give. Okay, I think that was the wrong choice, then. Um. Oh my god. Okay, sheesh. Damn it! Oh, there we go. That low fire. Calm down, Lisa. I can't but feel as overstepping the bounds of she was a the situation by stepping in easy. Lisa, I understand you have certain priorities to keep in line, but sometimes you really need to give your employees some kind of time to cool down. Flair, you're the one who's always encouraging Lisa to misbehave and affirm... Okay, maybe that's it also. Her need to do whatever she wants in the moment. I hope you realise you bear responsibility for what just happened. How could it be my fault when you were the only one who punished her for being late? Was that the reason this all happened in the first place? Woman turns to me completely brushing her raven hair aside almost matter of factly, is it? If that's even possible. You clearly don't know Alexa as well as I do, so I can't expect you to know this, I suppose. You need to be hard on Alexis. If you aren't, at best she won't learn her lesson, at worst she exploit you complacently. Believing she somehow earned your approval to continue procrastinating like the hard-headed brat she is. Even if that's true, you don't always have to act like you're her mom or poke her, your nose into others' business. Can't you lay it off every now and then? What well, I'm saying, it wouldn't hurt to show Alexis that you respect her as your co-worker once in a while. Mm, this is a real world for Flame. Respect must be earned, not assumed, and what small amount Alexis had before has been revoked for good reasons. She has yet to prove what she's... Sorry. She has yet to prove she wants to change, so what else can I expect forced... So what else can I do except force the change out of her? Hmm, I honestly don't believe it's your place to make those kinds of judgments, Lisa. I guess we'll never see eye to eye on this, then. As manager of the studio, I know what I need to do. Sensing the prolonging this... No, pro prolonging this session won't be fruitful. I decide to leave things on a bittersweet note. Well, it's your call to make. I'm sorry I was overbearing with my opinion. I just hope things work out between the two of you. I do too. I wanted an option so that I could actually, um... Calm down, Lisa, but at the same time be on her side of the uh, situation. As in, it was right for Lisa to be able to calm her down. Calm Alexis down. I didn't make sense there, but I just wanted to be on her side of the fight here. Later in the evening, Alexis is back working at her desk while Lisa remains holed up in her office. I don't think any of us have gotten much done after the chaos that ensued hours ago, though. I pack up ready to call it a day. As I head towards the door, Lisa finally emerges from her office. Mayu, can knock up for us tonight? I'd really appreciate it. Mayu turns around in her chair and nods. Mm hmm. Is something going on, Lisa? You should lock things up yourself. Hee <laughs> hee, it's because we're going to the bar tonight to get wasted just like old times. Doesn't it sound like so much fun? Before I could even comment, Lisa slips ahead of me and has begun corolling Alexis down the stairs. Alright, Alexis, I'm ready. Let's get going. Well, we're off now, Toddlies, everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Hmm. Yeah. Ask how she feels. Say, Mayu, are you okay with not being invited along, Myvum? The brunette nods her head. Yes, yeah, okay. You weren't invited either? Oh, I guess that's true. Hmm. I stew in the silence as I try to grasp whatever's going on through Maya's mind. With the spirited tone of her body language suggests a brooding sadness, although she denies it. Twiddling her thumb, she continues to stare at my feet. Um, would you mind if I stay behind a little longer? You probably shouldn't. I'll be fine, so you can go. Oh, okay. Goodbye, Flair. Yeah, good night. With that, I turn and head out the door. Model perfect is coming to play. When I get to the office, I saw that everyone's arrived on time. Fortunately, it seems getting wasted has forced neither Lisa or Alexis to turn up late. Hmm. I'm glad to see they've made up somehow, or at least have temporarily put their side of differences. Soon after I put my bag down, 
Lisa gathers the office together for an announcement. Hmm. As you all know, this is the last day of testing we have before Reflections is publicly released. We all need to be at our very best today. Extra sharp, diligent and focused. We need to make sure nothing goes wrong. Alexis, Flair, both of your main priorities are to double check and then send out all of the press kits. Okay, you can count on me, boss lady. Sure thing. Mayu, you are to ensure that our website, social and blog queer... Sorry, queues... I was about to say queries, by the way. Don't jump to the gun, okay? And gameplay are without issue. On here. I expect all of you to get this done before you leave tonight. All work on Missouri Love's company will be postponed until further notice. Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. Alright, let's get to work. Hoping she doesn't feel overburdened, I approach Lisa to ask how things are going with the pre-release campaign. For the most part, I already have the marketing taken care of. All of the ads are set up and ready to go out any time. Other than that, I'm currently in contact with several games journalists who are willing to review our, review our game. I would have liked to have been able to send them early copies of the game, but it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. I'm glad things are okay. True, there's nothing I can't handle. What's seriously stressing me out though is the barrage of spam emails asking for game keys in exchange for so called reviews. Like, I know you're not this famous streamer who only plays m MOBs. Why would he play a visual novel? These people just don't stop. I recall Lisa having to sit or shift through all of our spam emails for, over, for an hour. Or to, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought here for an hour or two with all of our other releases as well. The worst part is our website and customer support messages keep getting pushed to the bottom because of it. There's just too damn much spam for me or my email filter to handle. As I've told Lisa before, she really should invest in a customizable filter. It would save us so much extra time and hassle. Maybe I can help you out with that. Let me filter the messages for you. We can switch jobs until I'm done. The woman gracefully smiles, her satisfaction clear as day. Thank you for your offer, Flair. I think I'll take you up on that, if you don't mind. Sure thing, I know how busy you can get. Well, how about we get right to it? Follow me. Her office. Lisa guides me over to her desk before showing me the problem with her monitor. So, this is the junk I have to deal with. Seems like there's no end to them. Did you see that? Another two just popped up. Don't worry, I'm used to this. I'm used to stuff like this, so it shouldn't take long for me to empty your inbox. Alright, Flair. Show me what you can do. I'm trusting you. Hmm. Oh, dearie me. Oh, de no, I'm not finished yet. Okay. Uh, nope. Uh, oh, what? You could just simply bin them. Bin. I bought Kia for your latest game for my friend, but it keeps coming up as invalid. Nope. Hi, I've just. I think that was probably a bad thing. Uh, hi, I've just finished reading the pre-release builds of Reflections, I have to say I loved it. Please tell me if there will be a sequel. Um, I heard a real cutie that can be reached here. Is that true? Send me back a pic and maybe we can get together. Bin. I forgot my password to my regular email. I'm going to be looking to me a new key. Nope. There's no... Oh, sheesh! I didn't mean for that. I didn't know the scroll wheel did that. Uh... Oh, sheesh. Um... Oh, for goodness sakes. No! Oh, my. It only goes back to a certain point as well. Oh, I am so annoyed!
Damn it all! I didn't mean to do that. Uh, sorry, folks. I didn't mean to do that. But I didn't know the scroll wheel was the thing that lets you to um, go back or go forth in dialogue. Um, don't even know you. Uh, please help. I boot. I boot you. No, Ben. Um, no. Uh, bye. Bye. Finished here. My hands begin to sweat when I hear the door swing open. Unfortunately, things haven't been going as well as planned. I'm in such a titty, but I can't tell tell spam from fan mail. And it seems like everything is end up being to. Oh, sheesh. Oh, let me reload that. Yeah, let me reload that. Aha! Uh -huh. Just accept all of them then. My, my, I guess you weren't bluffing. You really can work quickly. <sighs> what did I tell you? I need to put more faith in you, huh? I'm sorry. Why don't I treat you to lunch as a reward? I think my little hard worker deserves a prize. You think so? That sounds great. Actually, thanks, Lisa. No need to thank me. Yes, that's the route I'm, cho I'm choosing. I'm choosing this route. I'm choosing this route. For goodness sakes, I'm safe. I don't care. I can pick that another time. Liz and I walk downstairs together. Why don't you find a table while I place our order? I promise to get something we can both enjoy. Okay. I take a seat near the window and wait for Lisa to come around. Now that I think about it, when was the last time we were together one-on-one -on -one like this? That's a good question. When was the last time? It's been quite a few years since I moved away from university, and I don't think we got the chance to reconnect until after I graduated. Right. I think it might have been when you were still in high school. I remember when I used to visit your parents' house on my breaks from uni and chew to you. Uh, you would fool around on your phone while I was checking your work, which really annoyed me, but I never said anything. Hehe. <laughs> If I hadn't helped you whip you into sh if I haven't helped whip you into shape, who knows whether or not you would have passed your exams. I don't know what to say except that school is boring. My time at university was much more fulfilling though. I had the freedom to join clubs and study whatever I found interesting instead of being forced to write random essays about Shakespeare. I don't even like Shakespeare. At least you've learned how it feels to have to work on things you don't enjoy. It's an invaluable life lesson as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I also learned to try anything and everything that might get me out of having to do those things. Haha, <laughs> you haven't changed at all, have you, Flair? The waitress finally comes around and places a large sushi boat on the table. I made sure to I made sure to get you eel, shrimp, tempera, and octopus. I know how much you love them. It's true, Lisa knows me so well. Haha, <laughs> you're the one who hasn't changed. Take taking the time to memorize my favorite kinds of sushi. It's like you're still my babysitter. We each pick up our chopsticks and begin grabbing our respective favorite eats from the boat. I don't know about that. I may not appear overly different from the girl who used to take you to the water park every summer after pleading for your parents' permission, but I sincerely hope I've matured since then. Those are some of the best days of my life. In fact, they're why I consider summer to be my favorite season. When school was out, playing around at the water park was the first thing Lisa would take me out to do. 
Every single time she would dare me to go on the highest water slide when at the time I was afraid of heights. She helps me overcome that fear. It's a little embarrassing, but I think it'd be great if we could go back someday, just for old times sake. When I break out of my stupor, I turn to find Nisa chuckling. <laughs> hey, do you remember the time when you got a hard on because I hugged you too? <laughs> I can't believe she remembers that. At the time, I really hope she didn't notice it. Yeah, how could I forget? <laughs> it was pretty awkward, but also cute. You were too embarrassed to come out of the washroom. I had to keep yelling at you to come out. Flair, it's okay. Just forget about it. Other people didn't need to get in there, you know. You were cooped up in there for who knows how long. It's just funny looking back on it now. <laughs> I guess so. I really didn't want anyone else to notice. We've all had an embarrassing moment in public before. While you were holed up in there, it made my then boyfriend so mad. He kept on saying to me, Lisa, why did you gotta keep treating him like a kid? He'd be out by now if you stopped already. In retrospect, I believe he was right. You really weren't a kid, were you? I don't exactly, I don't exactly understand why Lisa's going with this, but I nod my head. It's strange how memories can reveal things about a person, don't you think? Yeah. The conversation abruptly ends in silence, neither of us saying anything more. We quickly finish the sushi boat. Thanks for lunch, Lisa. It was delicious. Like I said before, there's no need to thank me. I was just grateful for your company. Likewise. Well, there's no time to waste. Let's get back to work. You've got it, boss. Marge. After a return to work, the rest of the day goes as planned. Everyone finished their assigned duties, and before we know it, our game is finally ready to be released. With the workday over, everyone manages to leave on time. Back at the office. The launch of our most recent game inspires us to work even harder towards completing Mizari Loves Company. We pray it'll be another title of fandom novelty in our line of successful Atomi games. Everyone including Alexa is seemingly productive for the day, riding the wave of fresh enthusiasm that accompanies all of the online hype over our new release. I don't live for the reviews and comments, but this positivity serves as a reminder of why I found, well, I found, why I find being a writer so satisfying. The ability to create a story which can touch other people's imaginations in more, way than, more ways than one. Sitting at my desk, I resume work on the next script, starting by adding a few extra bits of dialogue between Mazari and the cast of the Demon King's Court. The hours fly by with my wave of productivity and I find little time to mess around. By the end of the day I manage to complete the hit I manage to complete the hit complete to hit the ghost Oh my goodness sakes, I need to take a break every once in a while of commentary. Goalpost of what appears to be three quarters of a script. While I pack my belongings, the lights are dimmed and the office's atmosphere shifts in mood. Curious, I decide to investigate the cause. I head into Lisa's office, which suddenly has extra chairs and tables set up in it. I also find a bounty of drinks and snacks, including delectable looking sweets and a few board and card games set out on the table. What's all of this? What do you think, silly? We're having a party. Since when? Nobody told me about this. <laughs> it was supposed to be a surprise. We're hosting a studio-wide celebration for completing our fifth game. I was planning to ask if he wants to help me carry all the stuff out from the trunk, but you looked so busy but I didn't want to disrupt you, so I ended up asking Alexis instead. As Lisa finishes speaking, a few co-workers from another department begin to fill the room. Oh, isn't this going to be super fun, Flair? Are you pumped? Not the right word for it. Anyways, I'm going to make sure you're totally wasted by the end of the night. You won't be able to walk straight when I'm done with you. <laughs> yeah, you know how I just love getting here, but I'm such a party animal. Once everyone is come to be seated, Lisa steps forward to make an announcement. Excuse me. If I could have everyone's announced attention for a moment, please. I won't take too much of your time. I know we're all eager to get this party started. 
I just want to thank you, each and every one of you, for all the time and effort you've put into our humble little studio. We have such, we have come, we have such, we have such come a long way since I founded it two years ago. We have come such a long way. It wasn't so. It wasn't easy when we started, as I'm sure you're aware. Through grit and dedication, we surmounted countless hurdles, and each of you played a vital part, a valuable part in our success. Releasing five games is no. Uh, releasing five games is no small feat in this small period. Is no small feat in this sort of small period of time, and I'm confident we'll continue to press forward and expand in our brand and fan base. So, I just want to say I'm grateful for everyone's help. Thank, for, thank you for believing in this vision I have. The room gives a small, respectable round of applause. With a professional shh tucked out of the way, Lisa retracts visibly, begins to let loose, unbuttoning her collar and smiling. Well, since that's over with, let's get this party started, people. <laughs> Everyone breaks out in excitement. Alexis immediately pours a shot of vodka and slides it across the table to me before grabbing Mayu and Lisa, putting them into the mix. Ha, Flair, you gotta start out, right? Pick it up an empty shot glass, redhead motions towards Lisa. Want one too? No, thanks. I'm not a huge fan of that brand. Besides, I'd rather pour for myself. True to her word, the woman pops out a bottle of whiskey and pours into a glass of, with ice. Into a glass with us, indulging herself in the burning, chilled smoothness of a liquid with a strong chug. Well, you should know how to drink. Lisa smirks. This is nothing, as Alexa can testify. You bet your eyes. She made it look a lightweight, but she's no pushover. You'll never guess how much it takes to get her drunk. You'll never guess how much it takes to get her drunk. It's, it's some crazy stuff, I tell you. Alexa suddenly motions towards Maya. What? You're only having one glass? One another? How about it, little lady? The brunette shakes her head, remains silent, and turning to watch Lisa in her festive drinking. Her eyes follow the other women's every move. The other women's every move. Occasionally reaching out to sip, still a sip from the very same glass of whiskey Lisa's enjoying. Well, fair. Looks like it's just you and me now. There's no backing down now. <laughs> Alexis eagerly refills my shot glass, topped off with whisk. With the what? Vodka. She cheerfully holds it out to me. I've worked long and hard this week. I think I deserve a, to relax a little. Ha! <laughs> You're on. Atta boy. On the count of three. Ruin it. We clink our glasses together and smirk at one another. One, two, three. Bottoms up. I down it in one go, wincing at the strong art of aftertaste. Although it burns aggressively, it goes down my throat smoothly. Next to me, Alexis takes her shot like a seasoned veteran, her pleased expression unwavering. Phew, it's been a while since I've done that. <laughs> you better get used to it quickly, cause that was only round one. Uh, how many rounds were you exa playing exactly? <laughs> the redhead ignores me wordlessly, reaching out to grab my glass. On to the next one. She paused for both of us yet another shot. Might as well skip the counting this time. Just go for it. Feels awkward. Given into peer pressure after they wasted so much, so wasted so many years telling us not to in the public school system. Either way, down the vodka. See, you already getting the hang of it. Uh, before I know it, we had a third, fourth, and then we had a few more drinks. I lose my count at some point, but I can't bring myself to count. I'm completely buzzed out of my mind. Phew, look how freaking red you are. Let's uh, get you there, but there you gotta see this. You truly have a way with words, my dear. So, what do you want to show me? Flair, he's just red as a tomato. <laughs> Uh, you're right. Lisa suddenly leans over to me and whispers, Don't worry, you're cuter this way. I can't tell if she's trying to compliment or insult me, but I don't bother asking. Now that we're on the mood, who's ready to have some fun? I thought we already were. How about a game or two? You're talking my language now, you're on. Mayu, Alexis, Lisa and I, as well as a few of our other colleagues, begin playing a series of drinking games. And things quietly down after 
Things quiet down after a few hours. The party continues on in a plain, chatty fashion. I'm still as buzz as ever, though. My stomach is starting to get seriously upset. I casually scope out the scene to see where everyone is. Some co-workers don't really know I'm sitting, are sitting in the corner playing more games. To my left, Lisa, Mayu and Alexis are caught up in a sprite, sprightly conversation. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, and I'd rather not bother them. It seems I've somehow been squeezed out all of the groups, left with no place in particular to fit into. I decided to end the night early. I should sober up anyway so I can wake up early tomorrow morning. I slip out of the office unnoticed and exit the building. Instead of calling a taxi, I started walking, hoping it would help me sober up. My place isn't too far anyway, luckily. Hey, when I finally reach my doorstep, I stumble into my bedroom and slump into bed, immediately passing out. Nice. Oh, I wake up with the most jarring hangover to date. Well, that's what you get when you bend to peer pressure, okay? I rustle out of a sheet to get my phone and find a text message from Lisa. Flair, where did you where did you go yesterday? You shouldn't have left without telling me first. I was worried sick all night. Oh, last night. I hope you're okay. Please text back, ASAP. I reply immediately, although my hands are a little shaky. I'm fine, just had to go home to rest, wasn't feeling too well. I throw some fresh clothes on and dredge over to the kitchen to make breakfast. Mm. With a hangover vis 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 vicious, I decide to make my favourite grizzly hash browns. Sorry, greasy hash browns. With an even grizz, greasier pile of bacon, it always hits the spot. Despite the pain, I feel pretty satisfied. The party was a blast, and now I have a few days off because it's the weekend. It's days like these where I can just sit back, do nothing, and cruise along that are the best. Cool. Monday morning arrives, and I'm back to work as usual, sinking into my leather seat as I always do. I'm about to organise my daily agenda when a friendly face pops around the corner. Hey, Flair. How are you on this? Um, stupendously spectacular morning. Pretty good, I guess. That's great. Alexa and I chat for a bit. There's nothing special. Once she leaves, I get up to make some coffee but bump into Maya and Lisa along the way. Hi, Flair. I'm glad to see you're alive. Funny. I'm glad I'm alive too. Good morning. Carrying on, I make the coffee I need to. I make the coffee I need to jump start my day and get back to work. Everything is how it should be. Rather, my life is exactly how it should be: ordinary, banal, and monotonous. Every day feels the same as the last. Nothing will ever change. Ah, oh, that's the end of the demo. Um, I wonder what would happen if you pursued the other paths. I don't think much will actually happen because it's just for demo and therefore other endings wouldn't be possible but I hope you enjoyed this demo as much as we have folks thank you to ah <laughs> thank you for playing the our lovely escape demo flare I hope you enjoyed it unfortunately this demo only allows you to see the common routes bad ending and excludes a few features that will be included in the full game but if you enjoy this, doesn't that mean you'll enjoy the finished version that much more? Tee <laughs> Flair, you know what you need to do if you want to see more of me, don't you? That's right, follow our cute little website. See you later, Flair. It's almost like you're actually speaking to me on a personal level. For goodness sake! Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been our lovely escape. Thank you so much to Reen Works for making this game. This has been actually a pretty... A pretty comedy blast, really. There's more comedy into it than the actual, than it actually uh, portrays. It's just a lot of laughs in the uh, in the game. So, thank you so much for watching, folks, and see you all in the next time of our lovely escape when we scope out in the full game, and hopefully we get to all 15 endings as it entails. But I believe it could be the case that there are five possible endings for Mayu. Five possible endings with um, uh, I've forgotten the name now, Alexis, and five possible endings with Lisa. That, that's just my uh, little hypothesis. Or there might be bad endings where it doesn't include any of these girls, and I'm just isolated. Or I may even lose my job. You never, never know. 
But thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, folks. Have a wonderful day.